Hello everybody, A.L. Levy here, and I am going to unbox Can't Kick Up the Roots by Neck Deep, which was originally mixed and engineered, produced by none other than Andrew Wade, and this appeared in May 2016's Nail the Mix. So this is going back there. Let me show you what we've got. We've got some drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bass DI, a bunch of DI guitars here. Some keys. And some vocals. So because it's all DI guitars and a very clean DI bass, I um, went ahead and just threw some amp sims on so we could get through this. Because look, you don't, it's not going to help you much. It, it, to have it sounding like this. Though it is kind of entertaining for the purposes of uh, the purposes of this unboxing, that's not going to work. So, yeah. And I make a lead group actually. Control the globals. Cool. All right, let's get into it. Let's start with these drums. Now, Andrew was cool and included the samples, um, but I'm not sure what sample and what's real. I guess we'll find out. I do know that this was done in a time period when Andrew Wade was using his kitchen, I believe, as a drum room. Let's just hear the drums and then we'll unpack them. These sound pretty good, but I do hear that there's slate kick snare and toms here. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna mute these for now. Let's see what we get. Hey, these drums still sound pretty good. I mean, obviously they sounded more powerful with the samples in there, but these already sound pretty good. Turning that down. It's pretty good sounding drums. Let's see what we got. Kick in. Kick out. Probably a sub kick. Snare top. Throwing the overheads just for context. I mean, it doesn't sound like the drummer is blasting away in terms of power, but he's hitting hard enough and he's pretty consistent. That overhead does add a lot. You know, I'm curious, what do these rooms and overhead add to that snare sound?
it's funny when you hear a direct mic. It's so dinky compared to when you add good rooms and overheads. So just, just a reminder, this is a perfect example. When you're miking up your drums, you know, you're putting a close mic on the snare. And you're just like, why does that not sound like, you know, a snare that I love? And what I know and love is great snares. And it's like, well, buddy, it's because it doesn't have the rooms and the overheads on it. Those are a huge part of a snare sound let alone processing and sample reinforcement and all of that. All that aside, just listen to the difference in these snares once you add the rooms and overheads. It's like dink, dink, dink. Suddenly it's a drum. Dink, 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 dink. All right, let's check out these toms. Now, these toms are not cleaned. You're going to have to manually gate them or strip silence or whatever, whatever you fancy. There's quite a bit of bleed, so yeah, you're, you're definitely going to have to manually gate these. But again, listen, there are okay sounding toms like in the direct mics. Nothing wrong with them per se. Sound like toms. Add these overheads in these rooms. Yeah, they were cooking with fire. By the way, let me just point out how awesome the snare sounds in just the overheads that I had the snare direct muted and didn't even notice. There you have it. Makes a difference. Okay, so we've got a ride here that has been already manually gated, a hat that has not. It's a pet peeve of mine when a drummer does that on the ride, but hey, it's not my, it's not my production. Yeah, you're gonna need to clean up that hi-hat track. Ride is already cleaned up for you. All right, we got overhead, room close, and room far. You've already heard what they do in action, but let's hear what the room close is by itself. Man, that ride sounds better in the room close than in the ride itself. I would use the ride direct mic to just bring out a little more detail in the ride you're getting in these rooms. Let's hear the ride in the overhead real quick. All right, now we've got a splash bell. Nice of them to manually gate that for us. All right, let's see what's going on samples wise. Because Andrew was nice enough to include that. He definitely didn't have to. We've got MIDI drum slate, whatever that is, and slate kick. All right, let's just go one by one. We'll find out what these are.
So it's just reinforcement. Sounds good in there though, but it doesn't sound fake or anything. And as I showed you before, the natural drums already do sound good. And there's so much of the natural drum sound coming through in those rooms and overheads. Like that's such a big part of the sound that having a little sample in there isn't gonna take away from that because it's just in the DNA, good snare and good toms. It's just in the DNA of the kit picture. I put that on there just because it was so clean that it was bothering me, but this is the DI. And it sounds like a DI. I just added this so that, you know, you get a little rock and roll when you hear it with the drums. Nothing major. This song is about the guitars, so I just wanted to give the bass a little bit of energy, but really didn't highlight it. It's out of the way, because here come the guitars. And again, the reason that I have an amp sim on is so that we're not going through the unboxing like this. But let me just say, Andrew Wade has some of the best sounding DIs I've ever heard. His DI's sound phenomenal. If you've ever wondered how your DI guitar should sound, pay attention to this. Alright, let's check out check out these riffs so it looks like we've got two rhythms and a fourth rhythm let's see I don't know if that's supposed to be panned a certain way like this and what's this lead di here with the drums it's interesting it's hard to really tell what it's supposed to be i think the panning helped but that could be totally wrong i mean maybe maybe it's supposed to be like this So it, I actually like it on records when you have this interplay between two rhythm guitarists where they're playing similar riffs, but they're not exactly the same. 
um, they, they did this a lot on like classic records, like Appetite for Destruction or something, where Slash and Izzy, it, like one guy was on the right and the other guy was on the left. And they were playing the same song, but not the same riffs. And if you listen to it on headphones, you can really, really tell. It's kind of cool. It's not something that too many modern bands do. Like, I mean, sometimes they'll have parts where it's like, this is the lead part over the rhythm, and it's, you know, guitarist two will play a melody over it. But no, this, I mean, is like riffs, riff parts of songs where both guitars are playing rhythm guitar, and they're both riffing, but the riffs are just slightly different. And I don't know if that's something that happened as a result of it was 1985, and they were too high to coordinate on who was going to play what, or if it was an artistic choice. But it's cool. I've always kind of liked it when it's done. Sometimes it sounds like a mess, but then when you hear everything together, it makes sense. So I am guessing that my one size fits all tone is not going to work right here. So I'm going to turn off the groups and I am going to dial the gain back for this. I bet you this is supposed to be a semi, semi clean over driven tone. Let's see. Sounds like that's too clean. We'll just go to clean with a little bit of gain. See, it all kind of just makes sense and has good drive when you put everything together. It's a, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, that sometimes when you hear these guitars on their own, it's like, where are they going? But you put that drum beat in there and the bass line under it, and it all makes sense. Now I'm starting to think that these, that these rhythm guitars are meant to be panned like such. Let's go back to the beginning. You know, and I think those of you who are all meddled out, it, the good challenge in a song like this will be to to get it and make sure that the song rocks, but that it doesn't sound like metal. And I remember during the mix competition for this, we got a lot of we got a lot of mixes. You know, we normally get about five hundred per month handed into our competitions, and they were just like way too metal for something like this, like. You're doing pop punk, which is, you know, it's under the heavy rock umbrella, but it's closer to the radio rock side of things than to the brutal metal side of things. And, and so you got to watch out. You can't treat it the same way. Rock like that, that sounds more like something Guns N' Roses would have played than like A Day to Remember.
Yeah, man. And when I hear the way that the ride is being used and the types of beats and where the riffs are on the neck and the keys that are in, I'm thinking a lot more in terms of like rock and roll, radio rock, like original punk, stuff like Guns N' Roses even, than I am thinking of like the modern version of pop punk like a day to remember or something that's you know can get brutally heavy at times this is more rock all right let's see what else we got we got these two leads right here See, again, that's one of those parts where I'm kind of not sure what's going on when I play it by itself, but I bet you when I add everything in, it's going to make a hell of a lot of sense. Let's see. these keys Andrew Wade is good at those uh, stomp and claps he he always knows where to use them let's see I'd almost say that that's one of his signature moves. Very Andrew Wade. Great way to bring the last chorus in. And let's check out what we've got vocals wise. So it looks like we got an all vocal stem and then a lead and two harmonies. Let's see. The golden groves are lined with affluence and roses, but the bag has down by... Okay, so we've got an all vocal stem that's kind of pre-mixed with harmonies. And then we've got a, uh, a lead. The golden groves are lined with affluence and roses, but the bag has down... I've been wasting away, but in a town with no way out, there's not much else to do anyway. If you're looking for a place to... Okay, I remember what this was. Sorry, you have to bear with me. This was years ago. What Andrew Wade did, um, and if you're not familiar with Andrew outside of his productions, he's a great instructor. Uh, you know, he's already been on Nail the Mix, I think, four times. Uh, more than any other instructor, and he did two creative live classes. He's all about helping people get better. He's a great teacher, and he wanted to insert a challenge into this Nail the Mix. He wanted you to have to come up with your own harmonies somehow, because let's face it, as a producer or a mixer, there are going to be times where you have to create harmonies, whether you sing them or you melodyne them, whatever it is, Whatever it is you need to do, there are times where you will be required to create harmonies. And so he gave you the main lines, as you can see, right here. Do you love this place and Which sounds great, by the way. Do you love this place and where I'll make my grave, my anchor lays? I've been wasting away, but in a town with no... And then, as a reference, he gave you the all vocals stem. I've been wasting away, but in a town with no way out, there's not much else to do. Any now, there's two ways you could go about this. 
You could be small time and just blend in the harmonies that it gave you, pre-mixed with effects, and uh, pretend like you're Billy Badass. Or you can use those as a reference and create your own harmonies on top of the lead lines that I already gave you. And if you use the all vocal stem as a reference, you know exactly what harmonies to create. So it's kind of like a roadmap for you, but you will have upped your skills by learning how to create harmonies where there previously were none. So either way you go though, have fun. So happy mixing. This has been A.L. Levy unboxing this awesome song by Neck Deep, Can't Kick Up the Roots, uh, which was originally produced and mixed by Andrew Wade. This appeared on Nail the Mix in May 2016. If you like what you saw here, just click the link below to start mixing it yourself. And like I said, happy mixing.